it's uh, good to uh, be here uh, after three years. Uh, last uh, time I spoke at Stanford was in uh, 2009. Um, I'm really happy to see some of you uh, again. Uh, you guys are uh, as young as three years ago, but uh, I'm <laughs> older. I've got a lot more uh, gray hair than before. Uh, especially in the internet age, three years is a long time. Um, a lot has happened. And today, uh, I'm supposed to talk about mobile. Um, let me tell you something uh, that happened uh, in the beginning of the year um, in our company. You know, um, every company does an annual plan, budgeting for, uh, uh, for the uh, uh, yearly results, right? And uh, we, we do that too. At the beginning of the year, I had a debate uh, with our VP of engineering on uh, our mobile KPI. KPI stands for uh, Key Performance Indicator, right? Um, so he insisted uh, our mobile revenue would grow um, 200 times, 200% uh, times, or, or triple. Uh, for the year, and I insisted that's not enough. Uh, the way we uh, try to achieve this is that, you know, for, for search, uh, the revenue is basically decided by uh, the number of queries or, or page view, and then uh, the capability uh, for you to monetize for each page view or each query. So uh, that's called CPN. Uh, I had a, a, a strong um, conviction that the, the page view would grow like 150%. So in order to achieve the, the um, tripling revenue, uh, the CPM would only need to grow around 25%. But I said 25% was not enough. Uh, when, when I had a, a, a disagreement with uh, my team members, usually, my team members will prevail. Or I will let them try their ideas first. So I said, OK, 25% uh, for the whole year, right? We, we were supposed to achieve a 25% growth in CPM for mobile search. Three months later, we achieved the 25% growth. But now I realized, OK, finally, the age of mobile internet arrived. And it has come a long way. Back in 2002, I, I was in China, and people started to talk to me about mobile internet, about mobile search. They asked me, Robin, when are you going to do a mobile search? Or you, they, 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 say, they, they said to me, you have to do mobile search because China has X hundred million of mobile phone users. The X started from 300 million, then go, uh, go to you know, uh, 400 million, 500 million, 600 million. The mobile phone users kept growing. But mobile internet didn't come. What came later was the so-called SP bins, service provider bins. I think many of you know what it means. Uh, many of the, the internet companies work with uh, the, the telecom carriers in China and, and became their service provider and share revenue for uh, mobile services they provide to uh, their subscribers. A lot of the company, actually almost all the major internet companies in China became profitable because they did the SP bins. Uh, companies from Tencent to Sina to Sohu, NetEase, you name it. They were losing money. Lo they lost a lot of money uh, in the beginning of 2000. And after the internet bubble bursted, they couldn't find anything that made money. And then this SP bins came along and saved a lot of the internet companies in China. I just didn't believe in the, the SP bins. And the reason is that, essentially, I think the SP bins is a relationship bins. 
and your success or how much money you make really depend on how good your relationship is with the mobile carriers. Or to be uh, accurate, it depends on how good your relationship is with the mobile carrier, uh, which is China Mobile. <laughs> so that would be a dangerous business if your business relies so much on one partner, then anything could happen. But they made a lot of money. The, the internet companies in China at that time made a lot of money. And uh, at that time, Baidu was losing money. So I also struggled. I, <clears throat> I came back to um, Silicon Valley. I, at that time, I still had a house in Mountain View. I sat in my couch and uh, thought about what should we do. But after that, I, I still concluded a relationship business is not the direction Baidu should go. So I continued to focus on search. I mean, desktop search. We, we didn't do anything on mobile for quite a few years. But after that, as you know, the, the, the SP business floundered. And uh, the internet space landscape, landscape continued to change. A lot has happened since then. Uh, the uh, carrier bins became more competitive. Now, in China, we have three major uh, carriers, China Mobile, China Telecom, and China Unicom. They each issued a 3G license. And uh, the, 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 the best standard was given to the weakest player at that time. Uh, the, the, the most dominant player got a, a China-specific standard. So there was healthy and enough competition in, in the carrier bins. Then the iPhone was invented, and Android became popular later on. Then I realized that, OK, it's, some, it's time for us to do something in the mobile space. But mobile is very different from desktop in a lot of senses. If you look at the whole internet space in China, there are basically three major categories uh, in terms of revenue or, or nature of the business. The, the first is obviously advertising, right? Uh, <clears throat> this is also a major uh, business uh, for the rest of the world, uh, including the US. When people talk about internet, the, the first thing they think about in terms of business model is advertising. And in China, that's a big business too. We are in that business. But there are things that's China specific. That's online games. The online games market in China is larger than the advertising bins, online advertising bins. So that's different, but that's, that's a proven bins uh, in China. And the third major bins uh, model for the internet is e-commerce, uh, supporting e-commerce transactions um, on the internet. There are only three major bins models uh, for the internet. And all of these bins models are challenged on the mobile platform. For, for the advertising bins, you probably understand it easily. The larger the, the screen is, the, the larger the revenue is, right? For, for the TV screen, it's probably the, the largest. Then a lot of the, the revenue um, are spent, uh, advertising revenue on, or advertising budget are spent on TV. That's true in China, that's also true in the US. And for online advertising, when you are on a, a desktop, it, it's still OK. It still represents a, a large percentage of the total online uh, or, or the total uh, advertising market. But when it comes to mobile phones, the screen is much smaller. It's very hard for you to. Uh, put in a lot of ads among the content. So you can see that uh, from US to China, 
uh, from display ads to search. Uh, mobile advertising does not command the same monetization capability as desktop internet. So that's for advertising. And for online games, it's similar. If you study the, the major uh, game companies in China from you know, uh, Tencent to, to Shanda to NetEase, they, they make most of their money from online games. But uh, the, uh, the games are mostly client-side games or uh, the so-called MMORPG. You, have, you usually have to download a, a large package of software on your desktop uh, before playing uh, with the games. It's very hard for people to accept a smaller screen, less powerful uh, computer to do that. So today, both in the US and in China, um, games on the mobile uh, uh, handsets are, mu are much smaller businesses than the desktop-based games. And then e-commerce, right? Uh, today, what we know, the e-commerce e company make most of their money or transactions from the desktop com computers. But uh, <clears throat> on a mobile phone, it has got started, but it's, uh, it's still a, a very small uh, percentage of the total uh, e-commerce transactions. And people haven't really figured out what's the best business to do, uh, to do um, the mobile phones. Although it's very hard for us to find the right way to monetize the mobile internet, a lot of people are very optimistic about the future of mobile internet, and us included. So we not only developed the best mobile web search, we also developed the best mobile browser, best mobile IME, which stands for uh, Input Method Engine. Um, that's not something you need in, in the US, but for non-English um, languages, IME is uh, very useful, especially for uh, languages like Chinese or other double byte characters. You really need a good uh, input method engine. Um, we have um, the best IME. Uh, we have um, a lot of apps that's very popular. Uh, many other companies also try to develop a lot of apps um, and uh, distribute it uh, through the uh, phone manufacturers, through carriers. Um, when you buy a phone in China, it usually comes with a lot of apps preloaded. And many of the apps are not wanted by you. And sometimes it's even disturbing, right? Those apps could, uh, could um, send alerts to you, like an SMS. Uh, so you are constantly bothered by a lot of things that you don't really want. So I, I want to ask you, how many of you know the term shua ji? Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, but. There's probably not an exact uh, term in English. Uh, Shuaji literally means brush a machine. <laughs> it Maybe the equivalent is a flash around, right? Well, when you don't want the, the operating system that comes with your mobile phone, you, you try to reinstall it with uh, an operating system that you like. And this is a big bins in China. There's a value chain. There are, there are developers who try to come up with a, a, a ROM that could be um, liked by the users, and there are distributors who will help consumers to, uh, to flash your ROM. Um, it's going to be interesting to watch how this, this ecosystem will evolve. right? 
in China, this year alone, I was told, uh, about 150 million Android phones will be sold. Right? That's the largest market in, in the world for Android phones already. So many phones are sold, and the competition is intense. Handset manufacturers have to find ways to cover their cost. So they work with a lot of app developers or distributors <clears throat> to preload a lot of apps. And uh, those app developers or, or <clears throat> uh, companies would generally pay two to three yuan for each uh, preloaded app. And the carriers do that too. They also um, try to preload a lot of unwanted apps on the cell phone to cover their cost or to lower the cost for the consumers to get their phone. So the more unwanted apps you preload on the phone, uh, the higher the incentive for consumers to flash your ROM, right? So if a large enough group of users start to flash the ROM, then it makes no sense for the app developers to pay a lot of money to preload these apps because they will be gone anyway. And before the app developers can figure out a business model, they already spent a lot of money and this money could be wasted because the, the, the ROM could be flashed. And because they, they cannot stay on the consumer's mobile phones, the mobile phone manufacturers and even carriers may not be able to make enough money to cover their cost. So this could become a very dangerous ecosystem. So it's very important for us to find the right business model for mobile internet. And I, I understand a lot of people are trying, but it's really not clear at this time yet. Baidu included, we don't know. We don't know which app will become the killer and which app will make the most money for us. But what we do know is that the users loved mobile internet and we have to go with them and we have to develop the things that they want. Over the past year, we have been worked, uh, working on a true platform that supports the mobile developers. For Baidu, our strength is really on the cloud side. You know, search engine is essentially the, the earliest and most, probably most sophisticated uh, cloud application uh, in the internet age. And because we worked on search for more than 10 years, uh, we accumulated a lot of technology on the cloud side. Not only that, we also accumulated a lot of users, hundreds of millions of users on the, on the internet. And uh, we have a lot of data or intelligence about our users. So what we could do is to offer our capability to the mobile app developers. The capability including, uh, includes storage, uh, the, the computing power, and the data intelligence. So earlier this month, during our annual event, Baidu World, we uh, revealed the so-called seven weapons for the mobile developers. That includes uh, BAE, Baidu Application Engine, um, PCS, Personal Storage Service, and uh, uh, ScreenX. It's a tool that allows an app to, to play uh, on multiple screens simultaneously. Um, and uh, many others. And these tools are all free to the developers. So they can use our platform, use our storage, use our computing power for free to develop their 
apps. So we hope to form a, a vibrant ecosystem for mobile apps based on the, the um, infrastructure we have built. And we hope someday there will be a, a right app for the, the mobile internet space. By right app, I mean it, it's both popular and it's got a BINS model. People have forgot that a popular app doesn't mean you will be able to survive. Uh, if you go back like 15 years ago, you understand <coughs> Netscape was a very popular uh, piece of software, but they were not able to survive because they didn't have the right business model. After that, you know, uh, a lot of company failed during the internet bubble um, in year 2000. But today, when you ask all the entrepreneurs, um, especially in China, when, when you ask them about their plans, or when you ask them how, do you, how would you make money, they would generally answer, oh, I don't care. They would say, okay, I'll first try to get enough number of users. But enough number of users really means enough number of cost. Doesn't necessarily mean uh, enough amount of money, right? So I think we are at this dangerous juncture that a lot of people are rushing into the mobile space, but we have yet um, able, being able to figure out how this ecosystem will be sustained. I know in the US that uh, most people <coughs> think ads or advertising is the way to go. But uh, we know that uh, the monetization capabilities for um, Google and Facebook and many other companies, uh, their CPM on PC is way higher than on the mobile phone. But in China, there are lots of companies that does things very differently. And online game is a typical example. Well, they can charge the consumers directly. So for mobile internet, this, this pre-charge or subscription-based bins could become very popular because otherwise you would not be able to make money and this ecosystem will not be able to survive, right? We have a background of advertising. Uh, we studied the, the mobile advertising a lot. Search is still very effective and the CPM could grow dramatically. But other than search, the CPM could, is very low, and we don't have any good insight on how to improve that. So that posed a lot of challenge to the whole internet world, to the whole landscape. Everyone has to think hard about what should we do for, for the mobile internet. China is a big country now, as you know, that uh, uh, a lot of things are at a larger scale than it is in the US. Baidu probably answers more query in China than Google does in the US. And uh, when there's something that's hot or uh, that's popular, a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs will rushing into it. The, the group buying phenomenon last year was a typical example. And the, the result for that is that services in China generally get better and better and become more competitive. Here in, in this country, 
uh, if you want five gigabyte of uh, uh, online storage space, you are probably need to pay a, a subscription fee. But in China, uh, the standard offering for Baidu is 15 gigabyte, and you can get up to 100 gigabyte of free space. As I mentioned before, that we offer computing power, we, we offer storage, we offer user, we, we offer a lot of tools for the mobile developers, and that's all for free. And the reason we're doing this is because we think the market will eventually figure things out, figure out how do we make money, right? If you cannot make money, based on advertisement, the developers will eventually start to charge the consumers. Otherwise, this, this, this market wouldn't, wouldn't exist. So people are very dependent on their mobile phones now. So they will have to pay either way or they all have to pay a subscription fee or they, they all have to uh, watch or read an ad. We just don't know uh, which direction will be the most popular one going forward. Because China has a large crowd, has a large user base, and because the competition is very intense, I do expect a lot of the innovation will come from China going forward. When I started Baidu back 12 years ago, people constantly talk about the, the Chinese internet business model is usually, uh, it's all about C2C, copy to China. Now it's changing because we have a very large base now. The internet population in China is larger than the US, right? Uh, whenever an app or service comes up, you all need to at least reach a scale of 100 million subscribers in order to really survive. But once you reach that scale, survival wouldn't be a big problem, but how do you really strive, become really successful, that's a different story. For this kind of scale, it's very possible for us to encounter a new problem before the US encounters, right? And I believe that innovation usually comes from problem solving. If you are able to encounter a problem before anyone else, chances are that you will be able to solve that problem. And the moment you solve the problem, you make some innovation. And that's why we are very hopeful about the future of China's internet, especially the mobile internet uh, space. Because we, we do have, I don't know, 600 million, 700 million mobile users and uh, they will be using smartphones very soon. So they, they will carry an internet terminal uh, 24 hours. And they will be able to demand things that was not demanded uh, elsewhere in the world. And we, as the developers and service providers of the internet space, will be able to solve their problems first and innovate. So I encourage every one of you uh, visit China more and uh, get a better sense of, of this market. If you have an uh, interest to, to go to China to do business, um, <clears throat> I think that's it. that would be a good uh, decision. There is a good chance you will be able to find opportunities that you cannot find here in the US. That's all I have for today, thank you. <clears throat> Questions. Robin has said he'd be happy to take some questions if you want to queue up at the microphones. 
you could choose who you'd like to ask. There's a Hi, um, I'm from East Asian Studies Department uh, at Stanford. I have a few questions, uh, just basically just one, one question about the perceived future sizes of uh, Baidu and also, also to the microphone. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. I have a question about your perceived future size for the um, internet, uh, I mean, uh, mobile internet uh, uh, searching engines in the future because um, I think this is actually changing the business model for uh, uh, on, on, a, on a very uh, significant level in terms of basically uh, right now, uh, b before, before the uh, mobile internet, basically Baidu was successful because of its size. And yet right now uh, when we're actually using iPhones, for example, it is the small apps that solve imp uh, big problems or even small problems that we really want. And for the users, we're interested in having something that basically costs like nothing. Uh, and can solve some practical problems. And uh, for a small company that are basically just interested in solving, solving one or two problems, they're very capable of having a few people and make a very successful app that can uh, uh, sustainably have some uh, subscribers. Um, but I'm not sure you know, how uh, Baidu perceive itself ha as having uh, partnerships with small businesses, and especially those independent ones who might uh, have no interest of competing with Baidu, but not necessarily have the interest of, of, of uh, cooperating with, with you. Thanks. Okay, um, <clears throat> that's a good question. First of all, uh, you correctly pointed out that there's a challenge for mobile search. Um, on the desktop, search is uh, uh, widely regarded as the, the, the gateway uh, to the internet for most of the users, right? People uh, start from a, a search box, then go elsewhere to get their needs uh, fulfilled. But uh, on the mobile phone, um, based on our, our statistics, uh, about 80% of the media time is spent on uh, apps, and only 20% spend in a browser. And if browser is no longer the, the, uh, the mainstream uh, software for uh, people to access the internet on, on the mobile phone, then uh, search would have a problem. What we're working on is try to integrate the uh, content with apps. Starting from 2009, we initiated a, a concept called box computing, um, which means you can type in anything you want in a search box, and the search box does not only return uh, content, it can also uh, return data, return um, apps, or the, the search box could become a command line. You can type in whatever you want, and uh, we'll try to satisfy you. Uh, <clears throat> So on the mobile phone, that's even more important. We wanted to uh, become the, the de facto gateway or starting point for our internet users by integrating both apps and, uh, uh, and content. So today, if you try our search on a mobile phone, you will be able to find a lot of apps uh, certified safe, so you can download quickly. Uh, but that's just the first step. What we're working on is to try to satisfy users' needs by figuring a smarter way to index those apps so that the consumers or users not only can find those apps by the name of the app, but also by the meaning, by the content within the app. So we try to become the, the gateway uh, for mobile phone users too. And once we achieve that, that status, we'll be able to distribute apps for a lot of uh, small de developers. Right now, <clears throat> the App Store model is flawed. It, it's very difficult for small developers to, to find their way um, to reach uh, the targeted consumers. And we believe uh, by providing a, a better search engine, which means that uh, the search engine can combine both uh, uh, the content and apps, consumers will increasingly use our search box uh, to find 
things they want, including uh, the, those apps. And once we achieve that, we think we will be able to present uh, a lot more opportunities for the, the smaller apps. And I do think that will be the future because uh, um, the only way for you to make a, a very um, vibrant ecosystem is to allow those long tail smaller developers to, uh, to uh, strive. And uh, uh, Search did this for uh, webmasters in the desktop age. And uh, we hope to do this, uh, but I do hope to do this for uh, the app developers in, in the mobile age too. So not only we allow people to, to type in uh, query words, we also have the best um, uh, Chinese language uh, recognition system that you can, you can talk to the phone and do what, whatever uh, you want. So going forward, um, if that becomes the, uh, the main gateway, um, developers will be able to find their way uh, to the targeted consumers. Okay, just a question about your mobile strategy. So just look at the uh, dispute between Alibaba and Google. Just Google just said uh, Alibaba uh, operating system adopted Google uh, Android's environment, infrastructure and tools, but make the Alibaba uh, can be uh, compatible with the current Google pla uh, Android platform. So the thing is also almost the same to Baidu. So you know, we, the Baidu E uh, operating system just adopted the originally it came from the Android infrastructure and tools and environment. And you just put your, re, redesign your UI and you just put all your apps on the platform. And you also wanted to uh, cooperate with the uh, Google Android's OHA partners just like Dell. So what this kind of the case, uh, the Alibaba case will bring some negative impact on your uh, mobile approach in the future. Things you know, Google and Baidu are still in a very sensitive relation, right? Uh, yeah, uh, I think what we're trying to do is try to uh, satisfy our users' needs better. Uh, that could mean uh, a better web search or a better browser or a better IME or a, a better operating system. Right now, the Baidu E operating system is based on Android. It's uh, uh, fully compatible with the uh, Android system. But we did a lot of things that made the user experience better. It's, it's a young, um, customized system. And we, we work with a lot of uh, handset manufacturers. Um, I think the market will eventually decide whether that's the right approach. Uh, we spend a lot of time to, to study uh, our users and try to come up with, with innovations to satisfy their users, uh, the users' needs. We don't try to reinvent the wheel. If something is already good enough, we don't have to modify that. But uh, I think the mobile internet is still in its infant stage. There are still a lot, lot of things that's not optimal yet. And uh, lots of requests, lots of needs have not been met by the existing system. So we are working on things like that. We, we hope to, uh, to be able to better satisfy uh, the Chinese users needs by all kinds of offerings uh, from Baidu. How much of your total R&D now is going towards mobile versus desktop? So if you could talk a little bit about the shift specifically in R&D spending and, and how that spending is, you know, where that spending is going from desktop to mobile. And then when should we expect mobile to become a material business? Um, and I guess material could mean anything, a few percent, 10 percent. Um, but are we talking, you know, one year, three years, five years? How, how far out are you looking? Uh, right now, about 25 percent of our resources are devoted to mobile. And that number is subject to change. It could change. Um, next month could change next quarter uh, or could change next year because the market keeps changing. So we have to constantly reevaluate our um, resource allocation. Uh, but right now, uh, the, the number is about uh, 25%. Of course, the revenue from mobile is much less than that. And although it's growing very fast, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning of the talk, uh, the revenue at, at least triple this year. Uh, but uh, 
it's still like a single digit contribution to the uh, total uh, revenue. Uh, exactly when it will become a more material uh, revenue source, I don't know. I'm in no hurry to figure that out because we know that there are lots of room for improvement uh, for the mobile CPM. So we will continue to work on that. We are, like I mentioned, we are developing an infrastructure to support a lot of mobile app developers so that they can run their um, apps uh, on our servers. Uh, we hope to figure out a business model later on uh, from that yet. But that's probably a, at least a, a, a three year uh, you know, uh, uh, timeline for any revenue or, or profit. I have a question about your core business. Um, you've got a, a new challenge from uh, Chihu 360 recently, and I'm just wondering uh, on the on the desktop search um, at this point, is innovation slowed down? Is it going to be easier for competitors to catch up to you? And what are you doing to innovate further and 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 expand your lead? Um, I, I've been working on the search engine for many many years, and uh, I firmly believe. Uh, whoever can provide the best user experience will be able to win the market uh, for search. Um, search is a very complicated matter. You have to devote a lot of um, R&D resources and be very focused in order to uh, come up with the, with the best um, search quality. Um, we have a, a huge lead over um, many, uh, almost all, of the competitors in terms of uh, uh, search quality. And we will continue to devote more resources, especially R&D resources, into um, the, the Chinese language search. So we believe uh, longer term, users will uh, still come to the best um, quality search engine, uh, wherever that is, uh, in China or elsewhere. It's just uh, sometimes certain distribution channel could command a, a, a small percentage of search traffic. Um, but that's, uh, that's not going to become a, a, a really competing product to me. I, I think uh, uh, you can find distribu cha distribution channels here and there, but it's, uh, at the end of the day, it's the search quality that will um, that will drive most of the internet users to a search engine. Thank you. Uh, sort of following up uh, on that same question, is there anything different about 360 versus the other competitors that you've previously faced, you know, successfully in the market? And secondly, from that, you know, how do you think about the runway remaining in, you know, core desktop search? Obviously, you know, the growth opportunity there. Uh, yeah, I think uh, there are competitors that focused on search quality, and there are sometimes competitors, sometimes partners that focus on channel or distribution. Uh, for example, um, the, the telecom carriers um, was an uh, important distribution channel for our search, and uh, some of them uh, still are. Uh, they have their value in, in, the, in the value chain. Sometimes we choose to work with them, sometimes they choose to work with someone else and compete with us. Um, I think that's okay. At the end of the day, again, uh, if we can provide the best user experience, we'll be able to win, win the market. Um, I think time is up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take one more or you're, you're finished? One more, please. Okay, one more. All right, okay. <laughs> so uh, my name is Ivy. I'm uh, from. He, he's, he's got a tag telling okay. me time yeah, stuff. I saw that. Okay. <laughs> I'm from School of Education, yeah. so we've talked a lot about the business and technical issues. So I'm wondering, like, how do you see the social value created by Baidu in China? And also, like, what kind of social impact you want to make in the future? Uh, we took a different approach uh, from many of the U.S. counterparts in terms of social. Uh, back in 2003, we launched a, a product called, called Tieba Postbar. It's probably the first Web 2.0 product before the term Web 2.0 was coined uh, in the US. Today, it represents more than 10% of our total traffic and uh, tens of millions of users log on um, to enjoy um, this um, uh, online community. 
or uh, in today's term, social. The way it works that uh, whenever you, you, you type in a query, um, not only we show you a list of web search results, we also uh, show you a bar uh, that allows people who type in same query to exchange ideas. Uh, that's a very popular product uh, in China. After that, we also launched uh, um, Baidu Knows, Baidu Encyclopedia, uh, and quite a few other uh, social products. So today, the traffic for Baidu social products actually surpassed uh, the traffic for web search. So we have a very strong uh, social product right now. Uh, it's just, again, uh, what's the right business model for social? Um, in the past, the, the social products for Baidu uh, was really designed to um, help users to, uh, to better find information, to stay on Baidu. Uh, to use our web search more. But going forward, there might be a, a good uh, model for um, this social products to uh, just make money by themselves. We are studying that and uh, we are also uh, hopeful. Because our social products are generally interest-based, it's, uh, um, it's relatively easier to uh, deliver ads based, based on uh, users' interest uh, rather than demographic information. So we think our social products is uh, more valuable than uh, the typical social networks in other companies.